Hi there, I'm Florian Friedrich, and this is another tutorial for HDR Master version 2. This time we will be looking at the heat map functionality. Let's open an MPEG4 file, start the analyzer, switch to the heat map, or maybe select a meaningful frame. Um, we see some wonderful colors here. Let's switch those off for a moment. Yeah, so basically what heat map is good for, and some people might call it color map or um, false color. Uh, it's basically a feature that is present in many production monitors so that people can see where the highlights in, in a scene are and so that they don't overexpose and things like that. For HDR productions in particular, it's very important that we don't exceed levels that can't be seen afterwards because, you know, we would be wasting encoding efficiency and the values might be clipped by the playback devices anyway. So to show you what we're talking about, I'll switch on these false colors again. And I'm sure you are aware that those colors come from converting the pixel values to luminance values, in this case, based on max RGB which means that all the individual channels R, G and B are converted to theoretical luminance values, which is not real luminance because we have a real luminance mode as well. In this real luminance mode, we ca are calculating the cap Y value, the CIE cap Y value, instead of just converting RGB subpixels to the light values that they have within the EOTF. So let's look at the presets. We have different presets here. And one preset which I find very helpful is the thousand nit clipping only. This preset shows us where our content is exceeding the 1000 nit mastering environment. So in this case, we have quite a few um, sections in the image that are exceeding a thousand nit. I don't think they are exceeding it by much um, because let's switch to luminance and you will see it's only a few pixels. The, another thing we could do, we could go to the 4000 nit clipping and we will see everything disappear. That means that no pixel in the image is exceeding the 4000 nit mastering environment. Doing HDR grades and HDR QC on my own, heat map actually helps me to understand where in an image uh, we see problems. So for example, after analyzing the max CLL and max fall values, we might have a report of a specific frame exceeds this uh, specified luminance value. And with heat map, we can go to this frame and analyze the area where the problem is happening. And after we found the issue, we are able to export the image and then send this image to a colorist, for example, to fix the issue. Now let's take a look at all the different options that we have here on the right side. First of all, there's a color space where we can pick in between 2020, 709, sRGB, Adobe RGB. Uh, most likely we will use BT2020 since this is the container we usually deliver HDR with. Uh, the next choice that we have is the EOTF, uh, different options here as well, hybrid log gamma, standard dynamic range, uh, where we can adjust the gamma value and the peak luminance, uh, the picture level, which is purely related to the signal values, not applying any EOTF, and ST2100, which in this case only means that you have ST2084 with adjustable peak luminance. So for the heat map colors, you are able to change all the colors as you like. So let's change the shadows to another color, make them red. And the highlights, let's make them white. And uh, the midtones, hmm, maybe yellow. If we want to see values, let's say under five nit in blue, we will find that this image, because it's very bright, doesn't have a lot of values under five nit, some, but not many. 
Um, actually, okay. So only these black parts. If we, for example, switch this to 50 and this to 20, we will increase the number of black pixels in the screen. And you should be aware that in between those values, the colors are fading. So for example, uh, up until 20 nit, it will be black. And then up until 50 nit, it will be fading from black to red. So, you know, in the section in between, you will have some dark red, well, this dark desaturated red. We'll go back to the default. And we always have the ability to use the source color instead. So it's fading from the source color to the selected color. This gives us the ability to only color in specific luminance areas of or light areas of the image. In the area selection, we're able to apply only to a selected area. So we can have the original image and the heat map image side by side. If we don't need the legend here to tell us what the colors are for, we can switch it off. And we are also able to select individual items of this text overlay. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it useful and see you next time.